I'm Andy Signor. Welcome to Movie World, the place where we dig deep into movies. And this episode, we're talking about The Godfather. I just saw The Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone, which is a re-edit from Francis Ford Coppola of Godfather 3. Now, this is being hyped as sort of a fix of Godfather 3. Is it a fix? Well, you can go watch my review of the film over there. I have thoughts. Spoiler alert, it's not a fix. Uh, but you can go watch that there. I, instead, in this video, while I was reviewing, I kept wondering, as I revisited the entire Godfather trilogy, I'm shocked they have not yet made a Godfather 4. Well, turns out they almost did. And I've broken down all the information here about Godfather 4, and also how and why Francis Ford Coppola even made Part 3. So I want to break all this down. Let's go through it. I got some fun notes to go through. I spoke to uh, GQ in 2012, Francis Ford Coppola, and he said this, I never believed The Godfather was a serial. It was a very complete book. It was only because it made a lot of money that there was pressure to keep doing it. That's the business formula of movies today, where sequels do better than the first one. I absolutely didn't want to make any more Godfathers, even after the first one. For sure, I didn't want to make a third or a fourth. If I had my way, there would only be one Godfather. Uh, so the first two films obviously did really well for Paramount. Uh, it made $400 million, brought in nine Oscars, uh, and uh, Paramount clearly wanted a sequel. But Coppola refused. Uh, he, he, they brought him a lot of concepts, and he didn't want to see any of them. Uh, he also demanded complete control, which I guess he has. Um, and so after uh, some failures later, because you got to remember this was in the 70s, and then Godfather 3 came out in 1990, uh, some, some failures came his way, and he finally uh, teamed up with Mario Puzo to try to do his version version of a Godfather 3. Uh, so what was amazing is they got all the main players back. Everybody except Robert Duvall. Now, I didn't know this. Robert Duvall passed because they offered him way less money. Apparently, very similar money to what they offered Pacino, and that offended Duvall, who thought, we well, come on, I've been now to the third movie. You're going to give me a small fee for a small role? No, I'm not interested. Uh, and good on Duvall for standing his ground. The film absolutely suffers without him being in it just not even mentioned because tom's storyline in one and two is just fascinating since he's not italian what brought him into the family i could have watched a whole tom origin movie to be honest uh, the lack of him in part three is one of the major problems i think a lot of godfather fans have with that picture now, going back to sort of uh, another fun fact about the movie which i didn't know uh, originally sofia coppola was not supposed to be in the film uh, did you know, originally, it was going to be Winona Ryder? Man, that would have been so much better. I got to say, no offense to Sofia Coppola, but that would have been so cool to have her uh, there. 90s, that would have been around the same time as, uh, you know, Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice era. Uh, to have her in that film would have been very different and interesting. Apparently, she had to pull out due to an illness, uh, and Sofia Coppola filled in last minute because Francis Ford Coppola was in a bind, and that's why his daughter is actually in the film. I always wondered that because it's sort of like, why would you cast your daughter to be in this weird movie with the cousins hooking up with cousins? Uh, I didn't get it. Uh, she didn't have a huge lot of experience but they were in a bind granted they probably could have found a lot of people but Francis Ford Coppola wants to make things personal I'm sure that was sort of a are we got what are we going to do well, let's put let's put Sophie in it that she can she can pull this off I trust her I'll feel more comfortable that's clearly what happened there so a lot of people knocking on Sophia I don't think it's her fault her the, the role is just written weirdly uh but I don't blame her in the film and rewatching it. She's not the worst part. The character isn't great, but I, I blame more of Francis and Mario for the writing and, and choices versus her as an actress. Uh, and obviously she's gone on to be a fantastic director. Uh, now, so the shoot was pretty troubled for Godfather 3. However, a lot of critics, everyone just assumed that Francis Ford Coppola would pull through just like he did with Apocalypse Now. So there was hope uh, and still people hoping, you know, this could work. Um, so it finally came out and the initial reviews were okay. Uh, box office was also okay. I remember this was 1990 uh, and its opening weekend was $19.5 million. Now that may seem low to today's standards, but Home Alone opened as well and was uh, opened to 20, uh, its weekend was 25 million. I guess that was the opening. It might not have been the opening of Home Alone, but competing with Home Alone, Home Alone made 25 million as number one that weekend. Godfather 3 made 19.5. Home Alone being a huge family film, you can sort of gauge the, you know, how, how it wasn't awful. Uh, but the good reviews didn't last. <laughs> the reviews, uh, a lot of critics uh, came in, real big critics, Ebert, et cetera, uh, started knocking on the film. Uh, and there was a bigger threat to The Godfather than I think anyone expected, which was Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. Now, here we had a, a new uh, bunch of characters to root for, to quote. Uh, let's be honest, more interesting characters than there were in Godfather 3. And so that was a huge uh, problem for the film. 
constantly having to compete with Goodfellas being released the same year. And let's be honest, Goodfellas is a much better mobster movie than Godfather 3 is. I mean, Goodfellas is up there, I think, with Godfather 1 and 2. Uh, to compare to Godfather 3, no question. Now, uh, the film went home empty-handed at the Oscars, uh, and uh, Pacino's just, when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in, uh, did become a bit of a parody of the film itself. A lot of people wondering why they were all there. Clearly money. Even Mario Lapuzo was later quoted on Larry King Live. Godfather Part 3, I think maybe we didn't do as well. You know, sometimes you are lucky. Sometimes you are not. So all this backstory, what would have happened with Godfather Part 4? Was there a Part 4? Since Part 3 was such a failure, and Andy Garcia's character, who, let's be honest, is the best part of Part 3, uh, had potential there, and a lot of people were hoping he might be able to make this a franchise, what would have happened with a Part 4? Well, now we actually know. According to the director, uh, on the 1990 commentary track, he talks about this, and now it's also been revealed in some other interviews, uh, but he was going to do a similar uh, structure as part two. Uh, they were going to split between two different timelines, and they were going to focus on a present-day Godfather Part Four timeline, which would have focused on Vincent, which was Andy Garcia's character. Uh, he would have been the head of the Gar Corleone family, uh, taking over the face of the franchise. Uh, but the second half of the film... And, uh, that uh, would have followed uh, during right after De Niro's part, but before Marlon Brando's part in that zone, uh, it would have been a second sort of uh, feature uh, that wouldn't have focused on Vito. No, instead, they were going to focus on Sonny, James Kahn's character, who is uh, Andy Garcia's dad, who obviously, spoiler alert, dies in Godfather Part 1. So they would have attempted to sort of have a similar link to father and son in Godfather Part 4 like they did in Part 2. Uh, and so, yeah, Vincent would have led the, in the present day section, would have led the Corleone family head first into an area that, if you know the films, uh, Vito and Michael always avoided, which was drugs. Uh, he would have gotten into that trade and the film would have gotten a little bit more darker in that version of the mafia and sort of the pratfalls that would come with that. Um, he would also obviously be haunt haunted by the death of of Mary, Sofia Coppola's character, Michael's daughter, uh, and he would be out seeking revenge to anybody out there, any other rival that still could have be could have been involved uh, in that takedown. Uh, so uh, apparently, also according to Coppola on that commentary track, it would have only had one scene with Pacino as retired Michael, which I think would have really upset a lot of audiences to only have one scene with the Godfather. Uh, so that's what we would have had now. This actually was expanded on by Andy Garcia, who did an interview in 1999. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter claimed uh, that uh, Garcia would have been the lead role, and Garcia confirmed. He said, I almost had it going because I had an idea. At the time, I was working with an agent who was also looking after Leonardo DiCaprio. I told him about an idea Francis had about a saga, the one we just went through, and Leonardo DiCaprio uh, was the right age to play Sonny at the time. Francis was enthusiastic enough to hire Mario to write a script, uh, but then Puzo died and it fizzled out. Coppola confirms the story by saying, we had an idea for the fourth one, the one I told you about. Uh, I talked about it with Paramount, but wouldn't, Paramount wouldn't hear of it. Mario knew he was sick and wanted to leave his kids some money. So I said to Paramount, give Mario a million dollars to write it and I'll work with him for free. And at that time, Paramount had a very low budget mentality and didn't do it. Now, the idea of Leonardo DiCaprio joining this franchise as young Sonny, like De Niro and before De Niro blew up as uh, 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 Marlon Brando's character. I mean, that would have been so cool. That would have been insanely cool. I mean, I, I just I'm, I'm fanboying out of the idea of like, oh, man, actually, I'm kind of cool with that idea of Leonardo DiCaprio playing like a young James Caan, which I think he could have totally done. And then we could have followed back and forth like they did. And just how cool that would have been later to know that. Leonardo became who he was, who I'd argue is today's De Niro Brando-esque type of talent. It's one of, if you had to pick one of those, it's, it's DiCaprio. Uh, and DiCaprio's rep confirmed this actually was true to New York Times, saying, because uh, when they were asked, he said, uh, the talks are very, very premature. There's no script. There's no deal. But he would be very interested in talking to Coppola about such a role. So look, it was far from happening. There was no script. This was only like detailed plot line that was they were building. But this idea that it could have happened, I'm sure DiCaprio would have been, yes, please, Coppola, working with Francis Ford, legend Francis Ford Coppola, 
so very interesting possibility. Uh, so anyway, as all that was gr gr growing and, and it could have maybe gone if Paramount hadn't been so cheap. Uh, apparently it fizzled out because obviously Mario Puzo then died 10 days later after all this started talking about, uh, which is super sad. So now the question is, could they still do a fourth film? So uh, asked again in this, in this more recent article, Coppola speaks again, I doubt a fourth film could happen. When you do every project, you demonstrate what you've got and what will be good that no one has ever seen before. When you make the second one, you've got to show it again. I have a theory that the fourth in the series in a tetralogy is always the weakest. The second one is usually the best. The third is sometimes good, sometimes not. For instance, there's a great uh, Mishima tetralogy and the fourth is the weakest. And certainly in the Alexandra Quartet, it is partly because what happens is that by the time you get to the fourth, you are using up all the same stuff a fourth time. Fascinating idea. He's right. I mean, think about it. Alien 4, Lethal Weapon 4. I'm trying to think of other fours that have been out there. Usually it's it's pretty hard for a fourth to find its way. Toy Story 4. Uh, it's it's rare for the fourth to be the right. Mad Max Fury Road. That one was pretty exciting. Uh, so look, I'm, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule. Can you think of a good fourth movie to tell Francis Ford Coppola wrong? Tell me down in the comments below or hit me up on social media, uh, movie out with me. Uh, so, uh, keeping this going though, uh, he, he continues the, uh, the, the thought actually, no, Andy Garcia, uh, talks about, could they put another director? And Andy Garcia says, I don't know. I think people could do it, but I don't think it would be necessarily the same thing only because it's one man's trilogy. If you wanted to produce it and Sophia direct it, that would be the closest thing as she's grown up with him. Of course, a lot of people could probably make a very nice movie, but the lineage somehow would be lacking. Uh, I think he's right. Um, uh, he also said, though, uh, with Francis, I'm up for anything. The question is whether Francis would want to be in that world. He wants to make very personal movies now. So Garcia's left the door open. Obviously, it makes sense that he would. Uh, and, you know, could he lead a Godfather th film right now? Again, no disrespect to Andy Garcia. I just, I don't know. He's good in this, uh, but it just still doesn't have the same energy as the first two did. N not the same as James Caan, not the same as even Duvall, Pacino. They're all in next level. Uh, and Garcia's fine as like a young upstart in the movie. Could he deliver it now? Maybe. He's definitely older now. Now would be more of like, you know, Pacino age in Godfather Part 3, which could still be interesting. Maybe you, you find another way to introduce someone younger uh, and see what, what what's happened since. Um, so, uh, but the idea of Sophia coming in would be interesting, similar to the Ivan Reitman and Jason Reitman with the new Ghostbusters. Uh, who knows? Uh, but anyway, so apparently, uh, so I, I had updated myself. I didn't even realize Mark Weingardner did two books recently, The Godfather Returns and The Godfather's Revenge. And according to the reviews, like enjoyable thrillers in their own rights, uh, you know, different focused more on sort of the plots of the movies and trying to up it for Sopranos level audiences now. Uh, so, you know, not terribly mocked those books. Uh, there was also the EA game, the Godfather, which actually recorded dialogue, uh, had recorded dialogue with James Caan, Duvall, and even got Marlon Brando voice. Uh, so that, that was, you know, out there, but then Coppola didn't help the game because in the press he said, I knew nothing about it. They never asked me if I thought it was a good idea. I think it's a misuse of the film. So, he didn't help the movie there either. So anyway, in this, our GQ article, he finally flat out asks, they found, they just ask Francis, well, what would it take? Could you make a Godfather for? And he says, for me at my age, being on a big expensive movie that has a producer who will want to give me notes, <laughs> they don't have enough money on earth to give me to spend a year doing that. The amount of money that would, they would have to give me to do Godfather for probably doesn't even exist. The movie business is now so petrified and run by people wanting to make fortunes. Interestingly, uh, Coppola almost didn't make part two, which I didn't know. Uh, he actually guessed, do you know who he suggested for part two? Martin Scorsese. That would have been crazy. Uh, and he says, it wasn't just about giving it to someone. I knew this was a really smart idea and he was such a natural. Uh, but seeing Godfather 2 as done by Scorsese, I think it, it, it would have been just as good. I, I, no disrespect to Coppola. Could, 2 is great. Uh, and Scorsese could have, I think, easily made that just as good. Uh, uh, so is there someone he would give the movie to now since he clearly doesn't want to be on set to do that? Uh, Coppola says, it would be very tricky to be involved in, even if I wasn't the director. I don't know a director I could give it to. There are so many great young directors I like, but the ones I like are all doing personal films. There's no one I can think of who I'd send to do a Godfather. What happens in it? How does it have to relate to the first one, the cast, the look? I would safely say The Godfather was a complete movie. It wasn't a serial, and it didn't lend itself to being a serial. I wouldn't even know what the story is for a fourth one. All the people are dead. You'd have to do it for the money. And then he pauses. 
it might be great. <laughs> so uh, there you have it. That's the update for The Godfather Part 4 and The Godfather Legacy. Uh, it's interesting in the age of the Irishman right now, right? And the age of streaming services with Paramount doing Paramount Plus soon, uh, maybe they would start putting the money out there to make this happen. Uh, there's still time. Some of these actors are still around. We still have some of them still with us. And if you were to do it, do it right. Bring them back. Don't pull a Force Awakens and not put your core characters that you have access to not together. Figure out a way to do it. Cast some amazing new blood and see if it can continue. Look, The Godfather did become a serial, whether he liked it or not. I see The Godfather and Godfather 2 as three films. It's the first one. It's then the prequel with uh, you know De Niro. And then there's the sequel with Michael. And I like it all. And then part three is just sort of like, eh. It just, it just makes some big mistakes. It's not an awful movie. It's just, you know, when you compare it next to the other two, it just doesn't compare. However, compared to other bad, you know, try to be mobster movies, it's definitely good. Like I, I was engrossed. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting to see Michael try to legitimize the business and still turn into his father. Uh, that's what's so beautiful about this cut, uh, the, the original cut. Uh, so to see Francis Ford Coppola out there making some money, tinkering with the edit makes me think, you know what? Maybe there is, maybe it isn't that impossible for this to happen. Maybe we will see a Godfather four sometime soon in this age of streaming. The Irishman proved anything is possible. Uh, what do you think? Would you want to see that? Do you like any of the versions we had? Are you as disappointed as I, that we didn't actually get that part four with Leonardo DiCaprio as young James Caan in the prequel part. That would have been some good stuff. Uh, tell me all your thoughts down below. If you have a topic you want me to cover here in movie world, I'm going to put more stuff like that where I just talk to you, do some research and talk to you without, with less editing. I hope if you liked it and you still were enjoyed, tell me down below. Thank you so much for watching here on movie world. Check out these other theories and other videos as well as Steph's first time watching where we make Steph watch a bunch of classic movies. Will she like them? Find out.